In this movie, I want to talk about timing and how uh, timing affects basically the, the viewer's ability to comprehend information. Um, when you think about print design, you deal with flow. What do you want the person to see first, second, and third? And uh, in, in Flash, when you're dealing with any kind of motion graphics, you, you, you really have a, a, a ace in the hole there. You get to decide what they see first because you get to put it on the stage first. I think a common error that people make when they, when they build graphics um, initially is they have a tendency to want everything to come in at once. And uh, let me give you an example of that. I have here a, an example of something I think doesn't work very well. Um, in Flash, I'm just testing the movie. And we have kind of this little, uh, I don't know, uh, constructivist uh, statement here, but uh, volunteering, that's always a good thing. Um, so everything moves in at once. And what's happening here is you're, the designer is asking the viewer to track three different things at once. And that's, that's a pretty difficult thing. Now, at least get the wheels of society. Since it's moving um, right to left, uh, our, we kind of easily read over that um, as, it, as it comes in. Um, but then Volunteer Today comes up, and the, the gears are coming up. It would be even worse if the gears came down, I guess. So we'd have, be asked to track in three different directions at once. So instead of this, I'm going to take the same three elements here, and I'm going to put them together a little differently. Let me show you kind of the, the um, fix that I did to this. Um, let's run this one. So, first thing is the gears are moving internally anyway. So I decided why have um, them moving? It's, first of all, it's not really necessary for them to move up. Um, their power is in their rotation anyway. Um, and then that's one less thing for our eyes to track. And the other thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to tone down the gears so that we don't notice um, so that they don't compete so much with the type. Um, we see the gears just through their movement anyway. So what I did is I did a brightness adjustment on those on that gear movie clip um, and I'll show you how that works. And then I slide in the, the first set of type and then I have the next set of type pop in afterwards. And I also tried to get the second bit of type to kind of shoot out from the movement of the gear so that it would come out of a location that makes sense. Um, so I, I think this works a little bit better. Uh, and, and in general, we're using about the same amount of time. It looks like we're 65 frames here. Um, the other one's 50 frames. So the other one's a little bit faster in its, in its presentation. But um, for the most part, works okay. So let's, let's look at Gears 2 and just see how it's set up is, is a little different. Well, let's first see Gears 1. So in Gears, in the first one, everything comes in and basically lands at frame 23. And then you have this still spot from uh, for the next half of it or so. Um, so that's what I'm talking about, about as far as having everything track at once. In the second movie, the gears are stationary. They're just sitting over here on the side. I've moved them a little bit so that they're no longer in such a dominant position. They're now kind of secondary. And yet they're still in a place where, um, you know, we can see them. We can see what they're up to, and that's really all we need to get out of that. Um, the type, the first set of type rolls in, and it still completes at about the same spot. About you know, two seconds in, 24 frames in. I can't remember if this is, I'm sorry, it's one second in. So one second in, I'm checking over here at FPS 24. So one second in, the first set of text comes in and stops. And it sits, and we give it, let's see, it looks like we're giving it about a little more than, about a half second before the second set of text pops in. And notice that it just pops in. I don't have it um, slide in or do anything else. I just have it appear, and um, 
this little keyframe is indicates where it stops. And then the whole thing persists here, it looks like from about frame 42 over to, to 65 or so. So again, for a little bit more than a second, the whole thing persists. If anything, I just say we might want to have this thing persist for you know another second or so. Um, but essentially, I just staggered the things out. I decide not to move the gears, and I decide to fade them down. How did I fade them down? So again, they're a movie clip, and the movie clip is what makes them spin, right? That's uh, if I double click on them. Here's here's the internal movie clip. Notice that I have just these different gears. Each gear. I just set a rotation on it. So here's a small gear. I set it counterclockwise, and it's going, you know, one time in that span. The big gear is going one time in this span as well. It's going clockwise, and then the the last one is is going counterclockwise as well. And what's cool is you can put in uh, some additional degrees if you want to do that, but. You know, I think the, the gear mesh actually looks like it's working pretty well here, so I, I just am leaving it alone. Anyway, I have that movie clip sitting here. Since it is a movie clip, I can apply a color effect to it. And I've shown you before how you could do uh, fade in, fade out, all that kind of stuff. Well, I've just applied brightness. Um, all brightness is doing is um, making this look more like the background. Um, when I originally did the gears in Illustrator, um, they're just kind of a gray tone. Uh, so what I did is I just made a brightness adjustment just to get them to fade a little bit in comparison to some of the text. That de-emphasizes them so that they're not competing on the stage with all these the other two elements that are coming in. Um, the, and the final placement of the text is pretty much the same in, in both of these. So uh, let's, let's just uh, walk through this real quick in, in this one. So I'm going to get rid of all these extras. Let's just remove these tweens. And get rid of the extra frames. So I'm just right clicking or control clicking, choosing remove frames. Okay, so now we have just our elements. I'm going to drag this element over to the side here. And make that tent adjustment. And it remembers brightness from last time, so it looks like 67% or so. That's fine. Okay. Um, and this is going to persist the length of the movie, so let's come down to 60 frames. In fact, this time I'm going to, I'm going to make, give myself a little bit more time. Remember, uh, 24 frames per second, if we round up to 25, 75, that's, that's going to be basically 3 seconds. So I'm clicking on frame 75, and if I just press F5, that makes the gears persist during that length of the animation. Notice that the other two items right now only are living for a frame, and then they disappear. So if we test this, we now just have our gears running away. Okay, very good. Next thing up is we need to get, uh, get the wheels of society in here. So I'm going to extend, uh, I guess it's the first text layer. I'm going to have that come in at about, I think, uh, we had that shoot in at frame uh, 24 before, so I'm going to just do another motion tween. That extends it to frame 24, and I'm going to just slide this over. So that this gets into position. There we are. Now I'm going to go ahead and move in this item, volunteer today, and I just want to line it up. I, I, I kind of want to get these guys eyeballed so that they're similar in, in position. And you can use your arrow keys here to nudge. All right, so that's, that's kind of that final position. Um, 
maybe a little bit higher. All right. Now I'm going to move this down the, the track. Well, actually, let me finish up with the text. So the text slides in, and then we need the text to persist the entire time, the rest of the time. So to do that again, I'm going to click on the frame following this keyframe and just drag this out over to frame 75. So now that type just persists the entire length of the animation. Okay, last timing item. We want this guy to come in um, half a second to three quarters of a second would be fine. So um, a, a full second out we'd, we'd say be around frame 50, 48 actually. Um, so let's go out to frame 40. Maybe even a little less than that. Let's go out to frame 37. This is about a half a second. And we're going to have this be on a motion tween. I thought I'd put that in. There we go. There's our motion tween. And here's a little uh, hint. If, if you want this to kind of persist where it is, I'm going to move to the last frame here. Notice that there's not a little dot indicating a keyframe. So what I'm going to do is just move this around a bit. If I do a little bit of a nudge, that keyframe is now in place. So I didn't have to do, um, I didn't have to reposition. Now I'm going to go over to frame 37, or I think it's 37 where we're at, and I'm going to just drag this over, and I'm holding shift to just keep it constrained, and I'm going to just have it pop in right about here. I'm going to do a quick test just to see how that timing looks. Okay, what I'm really checking is just the speed across. I don't really, I know it's not persisting, I just want to see that speed across. And the speed is, is nice and, and uh, quick. So now I'm going to just get this to persist the entire length by dragging out. Again, I grab the frame after that keyframe. I'm just dragging it to 75. So it finishes its, its movement in about a quarter second and then it persists. Let's take a look. Okay, so hopefully what you get out of this uh, little tutorial is just this idea that um, you can have the same design elements but if you work on their presentation, which ones you introduce first, second, third, um, the, the flow of the piece is, is going to be better. It's not going to be as jumbled um, as, as it was when we had everything introduced at once. And ask yourself, when you're putting in motion, it's, it's just like any other bit of design. Um, if, if everything is moving around, it's just uh, your eye won't see any of it. Um, it's the same thing as trying to have, you know, a, a super bright design. So you, you put in all kinds of rich, bright colors. It just overwhelms you. Instead, if you have a number of subdued colors and one good bright color, that, that goes a long way. Um, so I, I hope this discussion helps you with um, the banner ad that, that you're building. Okay.